So good evening everybody. I welcome you all to this new video where we'll be discussing an editorial from the Hindu newspaper dated of August 23rd, 2022. Uh, this is somewhat uh, older edition of the Hindu but still I f found it important and it was in my gallery. So I thought I'll just make some notes out of it and we'll discuss with you. So this topic is related to your GS3 environment section and here we'll see what the author has mainly focused upon and then uh, some of the key problems associated with you know mount in the mountain areas and the solution that we can use it in our answer writing so i'll try to keep this video as crisp and pos uh, as possible and uh, the notes i've written it down you can use those uh, points in your exams as it is so it won't be any problem there so without getting delayed let's get started so this if you see the heading out here, it talks about factoring in the risk on development of mountain areas. So it basically the focus is on what are the risks that are involved in the developmental process of, uh, in terms of road constructions, buildings, you know, highways, all those things. So whenever you uh, construct all those things on in a mountain areas, mountainous areas, what are the uh, risk involved? What are the implications that are involved in it? So uh, you know, you can a question could be asked. Okay. In GS3, say for example, uh, there has been rapid uh, development in the mountainous areas because of you know demand coming up from the local authorities or to protect our borders or for many reasons. So, what are its implications? The question could be framed on these lines. So, to address the problems, what are the problems actually associated with it, and what are the solutions? This editorial is important for us. So, now as we go through the Editorial it's written there. Development of mountain areas over the years has upset the ecological balance. So as you all know, if you construct roads, if you construct buildings, if you construct towers, all those things, you have to cut down on the trees. And as you cut down on the trees, what will happen? There will be you know landslide problems, and in the long run, the ecological balance would be impacted. Why? As the trees would be cut, the animals would find have to go deep inside the forests. As a result, again, you know, there'll be huge wildlife loss and all those things problems that would take place. So I've mentioned some of the problems which are associated with your mm, uh, construction or the developmental activities taking place in mountainous areas so what are the first problem which is mentioned in this editorial is that it talks about flash floods and landslides so as you can see here monsoon rainfall over india is eight percent more than that more than what is usual for this time of the year so it's it started with the saying it started with the first line saying that okay in this year the annual rainfall is 8% more as compared so we are receiving more of rainfall while this might be bored well for agriculture in some re regions it also means floods and concentrated downpours with devastating consequence so it's a very good thing for the agricultural sector in some areas not for all because you know our Indian society or the Indian agriculture mainly depends on the rainfall the natural rainfall because we don't have proper irrigation facilities in many parts of the country so it's a blessing for all those regions where agriculture is there and that too in some regions. But at the same time, what happens is it results in floods, concentrated downpours with devastating consequences. You know what happened in Assam every year. You know, there's a huge amount of flooding takes place. Many people are displaced, displaced and likewise. Next, as we go ahead, at least 25 people were killed over the weekend as territorial, as torrential rains triggered flash floods and landslips in Himachal Pradesh. So what happened was at least 25 people were killed in the recent floods and landslides that took place in Himachal Pradesh. So you can see the first problem is associated with loss of life. When there is excess flood that results in landslides in Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. If you want to give the example, that's fine. If you want to skip here the example, you can still do that. Several arterial roads were blocked by debris as currents wash, washed away bridges and vehicles. So as a result, what happened when, when there are mountains and there is landslide taking place, so the roads that are connected, what will happen? All the debris will start collecting here and this will re result in a blockade. So movement of goods and community, movements of vehicles, movement of goods and communities won't take place that easily. So that's what it's written here. Several arterial roads means very important roads are blocked by debris as current, currents washed away bridges and vehicles. What is this debris actually is? These are the bridges, the top, uh, the huge bridges that were constructed. They are all shattered and broken down and all the mess has been piled up on the roads now. The toll was higher in Himachal Pradesh with which uh, with 21 killed and 12 injured. At least 6 are missing due to chaos following the downpour. Mandi, Kangra and Chamba 
are, were the worst affected districts in the state. So these are three places in Himachal Pradesh that are worst affected by this downpour that resulted in landslip or landslide. While death and damage to property are the surface manifestations of these rains, there is a range of secondary effects with long-term downstream effects. So first is, as you say, loss of life and property, you can say. The first point you can write is here, loss of life and property. Next is your schools and transport facilities, for instance, are immediately put out of action. So next what happens, if you know there is huge downpour, there is huge landslide, schools would be shut and transport facilities would be staggered. You know, transportation won't take place that easily. As I told you, you know, the, all the roads are blocked with debris and all. So I've written it here also. Flash floods and landslides causing loss to human and animal life. So not only human beings are killed as well as animals are also killed many times. Which uh, And also there is a great impact on the property as the huge amount of property is damaged. As you can see. Next, when we go down, schools and transport facilities, for instance, are immediately put out of action, leading to loss of productive hours. So, there is a loss of productive hours. Why? There is no schools. Schools have been stopped and transportation have also been stopped. So, that means, suppose a vehicle took around four hours to, you know, travel from Delhi to Himachal. Just let's assume. Now, because there is landslide, there is load blockage or there is heavy downpour, downpour uh, because of which travel, uh, this uh, vehicle cannot move. So, as a result, what happened? There is a loss of productive hours. Cattle and saplings are left to perish, which in turn destroys livelihood, debilitates family finances and strains the finances of the state exchequer. So what this state, this point is trying to convey is that cattle and sap, saplings. So first of all, whenever some kind of emergency situation or, you know, a natural uh, hazard takes place in the terms of floods or landslides, cattle and saplings means small trees and all those things. They are not taken care of first. The first priority is always given to the human life. So as a result, there is a huge loss for animal animal life there is huge loss and what happens in as a result of loss of cattle and sapling sapling they are also trying to convey in the sense of agricultural saplings the, all the agricultural ground that are there which uh, got seriously affected due to floods so what happened was cattle and saplings are left to perish which in turn destroys so you know agriculture is one of the primary activities in our country where most of the population is employed in this kind of uh, economic activity agriculture so when you know cattle and saplings are destroyed what will happen it will again destroy the livelihood of the farmers as the livelihood destroys what will happen they don't have anything their source of income is destroyed that again puts a huge pressure on the fi family finances you know now family is more poor more uh, debt stricken and you know they have to uh, look for some other sources to feed to bring food on their table and as a result finally what happens because of that there is a huge strain on the state exchequer state exchequer means a state has a certain amount of budget which it uses for you know different things like road development you know healthcare facility education now because of this landslide because of this flood this amount which was previously being used for education or you know developmental activities is being used for compensating those who are affected by the by these disasters so puts an additional pressure on the state exchequer. The monsoon, so it's written here also, I've written the fourth point down. Financial strains, cattle and agricultural pe agriculture perishes. First point, it's a sub point of this point. Loss to state exchequer. Again, there is a loss to state exchequer and weakening of economic situations of the family. So more and more people are uh, thrown into the poverty trap. Next line, as you see, the monsoon compresses around 75% of India's annual rainfall into four months and unevenly waters the country's highly diverse terrain. So as you can say, they are talking something about the monsoons here that monsoons comprises around 75% of India's annual rainfall. The total amount of rainfall that uh, comes to India, monsoons particularly comprises 75% of that. Less 25% comes from the winter rainfall or you know some other kind of rainfall that ha that happens you know throughout the year during the winter season you can say. Monsoons may, it comprises 75% of the annual rainfall. Less 25 comes in the winter season and you know some other seasons like autumn season likewise. And unevenly waters the or what it does is it waters the country unevenly. That's not that in a particular area uh, say 10 meters of rainfall is recorded in the other area also 10 meters would be recorded. No. In some areas if it's say 10 meters other area it can be 50 meters rainfall also that could be recorded. So next is it is therefore inevitable that some spots are far more vulnerable and bear a disproportionate impact of climate furries. So that's obvious you know because some areas and some spots are you know vulnerable and they have to bear a disproportionate impact of climate furry disproportionate impact means they have to face sometimes very huge impacts of changing climate or very less impact so some are vulnerable so they will face more impact 
that's the point is trying to convey a recent report released by himachal pradesh fisheries Depart himachal pradesh department of environment science and technology underlines that mountains areas are highly vulnerable to natural disasters so that means what it's trying to say is that now we come down to our main aspect of our topic that talks about mountainous areas are more more vulnerable to these natural disasters where development over the years has compounded the problem by upsetting the ecological balance of various physical processes now previously developmental activities in these areas were not was not so much and as a result what happened you know uh, even though these places were vulnerable to certain extent but they could still consume the effect of whatever was happening but now because of you know rapid developmental activities trees have been cut wildlife has been you know affected so that makes these places more more vulnerable in the sense next when we come down while st hill states such as himachal pradesh and uttarakhand have certain unique challenges the threats from the vagaries of climates are not unique to them so there is always a threat uh, you know moving around their head when we talk about when it comes to in terms of climate change we are saying monsoon rain patterns are being disrupted so the monsoon rain pattern suppose every september you also every july you have certain amount of rain so this or maybe june you have certain amount of rain so this pattern has been disrupted because of ecological imbalance being disrupted leading to rise in cloud burst cloud burst like events as well as rise in the frequency of high energy cyclone so what is happening because of this ecological disrupt there is huge amount of rainfall falling in play in term uh, in the likes of cloud burst or there is huge amount of high energy cyclone that are taking place as well as droughts that are resulting so i have written this point down here ecological balance disturbed now what happened uh, the sub point of this point is disruptions of monsoon rains pattern leading to cloud burst and cyclones and droughts so overall monsoon patterns are impacting the rainfall situation the cloud the cyclones and the drought situation within these are integrated warning about the flash floods and lightning so uh, even though we still have okay i've just missed a point so now after completing the droughts here they are talking about the solution one strategy adopted by the government has been to improve the system of early warning forecast so as you all know we have an early warning forecast system where which helps us to uh, you know forecast what kind of weather would be there and you know what are the measures we can take if there is huge if there is a possibility of cyclone or uh, floods taking place so that's a early warning forecast so so what the uh, first solution they are suggesting suggesting is that in this editorial that early warning foreca forecast system should be installed what, uh, what will be the impact of this forecast system it will help the authorities to prepare evacuate and rehabilitate next is within these integrated war improve the okay this point the indian meteorological department now provides fortnightly weekly and even three hourly weather forecast so forecast so now they are saying that fortnightly means every 15 days you will get a weather forecast every week now you can get a weather forecast and every three hours also because of advancement of technology you can get a better weather forecast next is within these integrated warning warnings about the flash flood and lightnings so not only it talks about flash flood it also considers into account the emergency situation that could come due to lightning not all of these are accurate and often they are not provided early enough for authorities to prepare themselves so the first problem with this is that they are not accurate at times so the early warning system first point you can say is that they are not accurate at times and many a times the second point that is written here is that not provided early enough so timely implementation is not there timely implementation is not there in recent year improvement in early warnings for incoming cyclones have helped state agencies evacuate rehabilitate the most vulnerable but such success has not been observed with floods so even though with cyclones you can say that because of this forecast device the authorities were able to you know evacuate rehabilitate the vulnerable section section but in case of floods the success is not very high in terms of cyclone there is still a certain amount of success but when you come down to flood situation they are not very successful in you know doing their jobs while the inherent risk of infrastructure development in hills and unstable terrain is well understood we all know that it's very important it's a prerequisite that infrastructure development has to happen in hills even at unstable terrain these are often elided by authorities in the name of balancing the demands of the people for better infrastructure and services many a times what the authority does is it without any rhyme or reason or without the need of developmental activities in particular area they still go and you know start constructing road bridges or whatever they feel like saying that is the demand of the people 
and as well as the, that people are demanding elided by authorities in the name of balancing the demand that people are demanding for better infrastructure and services so it's because of people we are doing that so they need to draw a balance okay we can skip this project and we can minimize uh, that will also impact our profits but at the same time ecological stability is important so there was a term when you were studying in geography that talks about balancing out or sustainable development that means you have to use all the resources in a way that you think about your future generation and then use it because someday or the other these resources are going to end so we must use them judicially that our future generation could also get an access to it next is balancing the demands of people for better infrastructure and services the increased risk and cost to such projects and infrastructure should be factored in when they are tendered out by governments second solution is that factoring in the risk what are the risk and cost involved suppose you need to build a bridge between two bridges but at the same time you know this is a highly prone highly earthquake prone area so you have to factor in the risk what is the risk involved and what is the cost because building a bridge between two hills is a very tedious task and it's a very expensive task so factoring in the risk and cost involved of building these infrastructure on unstable terrain so these are all unstable terrain where they are very likely to uh, very likely to be affected by an earthquake as we move ahead the increased risk project uh, risk and cost to such projects and infrastructure should be factored in when they are tendered out by the government and scientific advice regarding development ought to be strictly adhered and whatever the scientific advice that are given by scientists or you know experts policy makers they that have to be taken into account while building these kinds of infrastructural projects so it's a very simple passage first it talks about what are the problems involved in setting up of developmental or infrastructure projects in hilly areas so what are the problems associated with it and then it also talks about what are the solution that we can take while you know going ahead with these kind of infrastructure projects so the first problem is flash floods and landslides loss of productive hours financial strains ecological balance distributed so ecological balance so these are the four problems associated with this kind of infrastructure projects and secondly the solution is that early warning forecast should be there uh, uh the risk and cost should be factored in while building up these infrastructure projects and scientific advice should be seeked and that should be adhered also while you know these developmental projects are being constructed till then thank you and i hope you like this video we'll be coming up with more such videos in our coming lectures so stay tuned and have a nice day